I'm just going to be, this is what you bought and this is what you want. And it's a competitive price. And that's it. End of discussion. Very like. There has to be a simple way of getting this shit done. Yeah. Not a complicated way. Don't add to it. When there's too much stuff, you should be taking away. Like, yeah. what do we need less of? And and that was frustrating because I came from a world where, you know, I wanted a Mad Men style agency that had like all these people running around. You had a copywriter, junior copywriter, associate that copywriter. Seems cool, right? To have this big team. Yeah. Right. You're like, oh, I'm wearing a suit. Oh my yeah. god, it fucking <laughs> sucks. Okay. Um, and my agency's version of that was having a CSM and check-in calls and did you check with your client, all that. And I was like, man, I do not want to have to. If I was on the receiving end of that, I would not pick up that person's phone. I don't care that they're checking in. It's just more spam on my phone. I didn't yeah. want to be in the receiving end of that because I have been. I was like, I fucking hate that shit. I just wanted something that was stupid, simple, that would really, really work. And I don't have to spend a lot of time. I just want to pick up the phone. I was like, all right, I'm going to build that. And it's really, really hard to do that when you're trying to add stuff and value stack and value add. Instead, I was like, I'm just going to be... This is what you bought and this is what you want. And it's a competitive price. And that's it. End of discussion. Very like Amazon. Like I just bought that. That's all I want. And the philosophy was how do we get it to two day shipping? But we got it down to 30 minutes to build everything up from scratch. Um, so I, I think, I think the original question that people are going to be asking themselves is what industry or what niche do I go into? And one way of answering that is go talk to your friends or friends of friends and say, Hey, I'm learning how to do ads. Can I do a couple for you? And they'll say, sure, you draw some ads on Facebook and use Canva or whatever. Hey, do you want to try this? Cool. Let's see if it works on the internet. You got a hundred bucks, maybe you'll make some money. And then you just run it and now you have a client either paying you money in terms of paying you either money or in terms of video testimonials. Yeah. Or you just start advertising for a client. And, and you get to learn on their dime. Correct. Yeah. And I, I did a video on like, if I was starting up from scratch all over again, I would I would pick one of these three. I would pick online advertising, selling, or copywriting by the top 10 books in that chosen niche or industry or vertical or whatever it is. So like top 10 copywriting books, top 10 online advertising books, top 10 selling books. Read them all like the Bible. And then start sending text messages out saying, hey, I just read the top 10 books on selling. I think you can do some fun stuff for you and help you make more money or you're interested for a five-minute chat. And everybody's going to say yes to that shit. And then you get them on the phone, you have a client really, really fast. Yeah. But that doesn't come from having that client avatar worksheet that we all know about, like their pains yeah. and their problems and all that. Like I kind of like I went through the motions, but I, I had to throw it away because it was just taking too long. Yeah. And it didn't work. So, yeah. And I also think it's an iterative, iterative process. Can't say that word. It's like yeah. you can't figure it out from the sidelines without actually talking to a few of the people in your industry. And so the biggest shortcut of that is just fucking talk to them, right? Like don't yeah. no no, yeah. street, no sheets, no anything and, and figure out how to open that. I wanted to ask you because we, we kind of hit on copy. And one of the things I noticed in your copy that I think you do brilliantly that is, is universally true across local businesses is local businesses hate their competitors and there's always like four to five big kind of scammer companies within a niche yeah. like in ours it's legal match and in yours i noticed like a lot of dentists i i presume from your copy hate 1-800 dentist um yeah but you do a really good job of like calling those people out i would love to just hear a little bit of like you know the psychology of your copy and why you put that in there so there's two schools of thought the first is if i'm trying to get something up fast i don't have any copy at all i just put a canva ad creative that's 80 percent of the win really fast put a lot of time effort energy into the product and the price once that is working i have an internal argument of do i want to have more results and throw some copy in there and see what happens so let's say i have a product and price that is working so again canva hey treadmill gyms do you want more treadmill clients get unlimited treadmill clients and we'll do all the leads and qualifications for you for 7.99 a month whatever it is right that works cool get an ROI, everybody's happy. Let's try uh, optimizing and climbing the, the, the mountain. Yeah. So that's where I start throwing in copy, right? And here's what I found, by the way, that people will look at those ads that call it the competitors. And those are actually the worst sales calls I've had. The worst ones. Like, you know, like, um, like if I was doing pest control, where it's, hey, sick and tired of thumbtack leads, that type of thing. What I found is that those people back when they did pest control, those are the businesses that had structurally like the worst problems. 
like they couldn't pick up the phone. Right. They didn't have a competitive offer, all stuff. So when I applied that to dentist stuff, the ad stands out the most, and I get the most response and the most interest and the most desire from those ads. But those are actually the worst clients and the worst sales calls, yeah. which was the opposite of what I thought. Looking back, like I get the justification. Like if I was a personal trainer saying, uh, hey, really fat suburban mom that can't lose the weight, sick and tired of personal trainers, sick and tired of like fad diets, sick and tired of like, those are all things that they've tried that they suck at. And not only am I reminding them that they suck at stuff, but also number two, that is me acknowledging that they've had 99% failure rate. Like, why would I want a client with 99% failure rate? Like, if you can't pick up the phone for the thumb, thumbtack leads, or they 100 dentist leads, then why Why am I thinking that they're not going to pick up the phone yeah, for that, right? Totally. Right? Which is the opposite of what everyone expects when they ask that question. Like, I have found that those sales conversations are the worst. So what I'm trying to do now is actually flip that and say, hey, we have all the benefits of 1-800-DENTISTS without blank, right? So now I'm only attracting to people, or only talking to people that acknowledge that 1-800-DENTIST has like a good thing, that there's small areas of improvements or small pain points, stuff like that. But I'm going to be testing that and try to optimize for the top yeah. of the mountain because like we optimize down. But if I was going to rewrite that ad, it would be imagine 1-800-DENTIST without the long-term contracts. Yeah. I'm interested. Imagine 1-800-DENTISTS, but they only bought implants, not teeth whitening. Oh, that'd be great, right? So I, I'm only dealing with people that have yeah. their businesses set up for success and positive 1-800-DENTIST uh, interactions. Um, so that that type of thing. And I know that the other way of working, other way of working works, like when you call it the competition, I just, in my experience, like it's always the wrong sales conversation or the yeah. wrong narrative. So we're trying something different.